Hello, uh, welcome to Live at Five here uh, on the uh, Lenten midweek for what is March 17th, uh, which means I guess I should wish you a uh, happy St. Patrick's Day um, if you're one that celebrates in the festivities. Uh, we continue to do Lenten midweeks via this video, which is on Facebook Live, but will be also uploaded to uh, our YouTube channel. And uh, as Pastor Tim did last week, I am doing this week. Uh, you may notice that there's a bit of a difference in the setting in which I'm in. Um, this is not our sanctuary. This is uh, the recording studio. I am coming to you live from uh, the recording studio where I'm working on songs currently, and that's part of the reason I was not uh, with you in worship last Sunday. <clears throat> um, and, uh, and I'll be back uh, here in just a couple days. Um, as I wrap up my time here working on uh, songs for what I hope will be a forthcoming album later this year, uh, maybe early next year. So um, I'm, I'm in a different setting and uh, I'm happy to still be able to connect with you through this uh, Linton Midweek worship video. So welcome and we start with our opening, uh, opening dialogue as we normally do for our Linton Midweeks. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our psalm response taken from Psalm 25. To you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. O my God, in you I trust. Do not let me be put to shame. Do not let my enemies exult over me. Do not let those who wait for you be put to shame. Let them be ashamed who are wantonly treacherous. Make me to know your ways, O Lord. Teach me your paths. Lead me in your truth and teach me, for you are the God of my salvation. For you I wait all day long. Be mindful of your mercy, O Lord, and of your steadfast love, for they have been from of old. Next we have confession and absolution. Lord of all mercy, we come to you with bowed heads and bended knees, seeking your pardon. We confess that we have turned away from the Savior in thought, word, and deed. We have sought our own way and chosen the easy way, rather than to follow Jesus. Forgive us, Lord. Strengthen our faith. Confirm our commitment to Jesus' way. Empower us by the Spirit to live the life of faithful witness to your love. In Jesus Christ. Amen. At the command of the Savior who offered himself for us, I announce to you the forgiveness of all your sins. May the peace of Christ dwell in your hearts and fill your lives. Amen. <clears throat> As we've been doing each week, walking through the Lord's Prayer, uh, Tim, Pastor Tim and I alternating um, petitions from the Lord's Prayer, uh, we have two pieces of scripture to come to you this week for this next petition. So I'm going to read those now. The first one being from Hebrews chapter 4. Since then we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God. Let us hold fast to our confession. For we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses, but we have one who in every respect has been tested as we are, yet without sin. Let us therefore approach the throne of grace with boldness, so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help in time of need. And then the second text comes from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 18. Then Peter came and said to him, Lord, if another member of the church sins against me, how often should I forgive? As many as seven times? Jesus said to him, not seven times, but I tell you, seventy times seven. Seven, seven times, seventy-seven times. For this reason, the kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who wished to settle accounts with his slaves. When he began the reckoning, one who owed him ten thousand talents was brought to him, and, as he could not pay, his lord ordered him to be sold, together with his wife and children and all his possessions and payment to be made. So the slave fell on his knees before him, saying, Have patience with me, and I will pay you everything. And out of pity for him, the lord of that slave released him and forgave him the debt. But that same slave, as he went out, came upon one of his fellow slaves, who owed him a hundred denarii. And, seeing, and seizing him by the throat, he said, 
pay what you owe. Then his fellow slave fell down and pleaded with him. Notice the same words here. Have patience with me and I will pay you. But he refused. Then he went and threw him into prison until he would pay the debt. When his fellow slaves saw what had happened, they were greatly distressed, and they went and reported to their Lord all that had taken place. Then his Lord summoned him and said to him, You wicked slave! I forgave you all that debt because you pleaded with me. Should you not have had mercy on your fellow slave as I had mercy on you? And in anger his Lord handed him over to be tortured until he would pay his entire debt. So my heavenly Father will also do to every one of you if you do not forgive your brother or sister from your heart. Everyone thinks forgiveness is a lovely ideal idea until he has something to forgive. That's a quote by C.S. Lewis. And while C.S. Lewis said quite a few insightful things, this one has been uh, one that has perhaps helped me the most. It describes me pretty well. Uh, I'd consider myself an advocate for forgiveness, but I sometimes run into the situation where I realize I must forgive something that I don't particularly feel like forgiving. Perhaps a, a family member has just irritated me for a few days on end, and my annoyance is not so much that I've been uh, sinned against, as much as more just put out, you know. And C.S. Lewis addresses this too. He says, To be a Christian means to forgive the inexcusable, because God has forgiven the inexcusable in you. This is hard. It is perhaps not so hard to forgive a single great injury, but to forgive the incessant provocations of daily life, to keep on forgiving the bossy mother-in-law, the bullying husband, the nagging wife, the selfish daughter, the deceitful son. How can we do it? Only, I think, by remembering where we stand, by meaning our words when we say in our prayers each night, forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. C.S. Lewis ends that, that section with that part of the Lord's Prayer on which we're focusing tonight. Forgive us our trespasses or sins, as we forgive those who trespass or sin against us. And this can feel like an impossible task. Perhaps uh, someone has betrayed you in a deeply hurtful way. But that's precisely the part of the Lord's Prayer that we need to give attention to. So tonight we examine what it means to forgive others who have trespassed against us, even as we ask God to do the same. And therein really lies the tension, doesn't it? These two things are inextricable. We are not forgiven unless we also forgive. In fact, one could say that we are forgiven as we forgive. Forgiving others is sort of entangled and tied up in being forgiven. When we, forget, uh, when we give, grant forgiveness, we are simultaneously receptive of forgiveness. But as we said, forgiveness is hard. When you've been betrayed by someone you trusted, it feels nearly impossible to forgive. When you've had your heart broken, it can feel earth-shattering and impossible to move on. That pain is real, and there's no use denying it. There's no use in pretending otherwise. There's no value in acting as though forgiveness is easy, or that uh, perhaps uh, pretending that we weren't hurt so badly. Being hurt deeply is integral to loving deeply. And we acknowledge that pain. There's another C.S. Lewis quote about that very thing. He says, To love it all is to be vulnerable. Love anything in your heart will certainly be wrung and possibly be broken. If you want to make sure of keeping it intact, you must give your heart to no one, not even to an animal. Wrap it carefully around with hobbies and little luxuries. Avoid all entanglements. Lock it up safe in the casket or coffin of your selfishness. But in that casket, safe, dark, motionless, airless, it will change. It will not be broken. It will become unbreakable, impenetrable, 
irredeemable. Yes, we've been wounded, each of us. Perhaps in ways we dare not acknowledge to our conscious selves just yet. But as we uncover the wounds within us, we must address them. And through that process of addressing our wounds honestly, we find our way to forgiveness. Because forgiveness is a necessary step in healing. Sometimes we forgive for the sake of others, and through that process we find reconciliation. But mostly I think we forgive for our own sakes. We forgive so we can let go and not be eaten up by bitterness. Bitterness only hurts one person, and it's not the person we're angry at. It's us. We are each at the center of this forgiveness mirror. If forgiving others and being forgiven are sort of two sides of the same coin, then that coin, or that mirror, hinges on us. So we must learn to forgive ourselves. I think that if God forgives us, we must forgive ourselves. We must be able to not only let go of our bitterness, our bitterness at others over wounds caused by them, but also let go of our bitterness at our past selves for things we regret or things that we're embarrassed by. We must release these, the tightly held insecurities we've clutched and open our hands and surrender and release. After all, what is forgiveness but a release of things we've clutched that are harming us? May we truly forgive those who trespass against us while we beseech God for our own forgiveness. And in time, I'm confident. I'm confident that we'll see that they are both caught up in that same act, the same moment, the same truth of our own forgiveness that reconciles us to each other and reconciles us to the God who loves us more than we can love ourselves. Amen. Together we pray. <clears throat> Lord Jesus, the temptation to turn inwards away from you is ever before us, and the world calls us to care for ourselves. Strengthen our faith to put our trust in you. Lord Jesus, we thank you for your presence and your mercy. Give us open hearts and minds to see you in our daily walk. Lord Jesus, you call us to be your hands and feet in this world. Grant us the courage and the power to reach out in love to others. Use us, Lord, as your servants in this world to bear witness to your love and mercy. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Now hear these words of blessing and benediction. May God, who has called us from the waters of our baptism, and claimed us as children of the light, strengthen you as you follow Jesus. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine upon you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you his peace. Amen. Thanks for joining us. I'll see you guys on Sunday, and then you'll be with Pastor Tim next Wednesday.